Greetings from Brother Stephan. I'm a disciple and witness of Jesus Christ to all the inhabitants of the earth. I present to you as a witness this gospel of the kingdom. Now, in the last lesson that I posted titled Commission and Ascension, when I covered Matthew chapter 28, verses 16 to 20, I originally thought it was the final recording for the YouTube channel. But the Holy Spirit had revealed one more lesson to me that I'm going to present in this study titled In the Beginning. In this study, we're going to sum up every video on the Gospel of the Kingdom YouTube channel and the Gospels. That's Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John. Now to do this, we're going to start in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1. This um, scripture comes out of a subsection of scriptures in the King James Version Bible known as In the Beginning. And it reads, In the beginning Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now the first thing we're going to do is open this sentence up in a Hebrew concordance so we can see where every word comes from from the Hebrew language and basically that's what I have here for you if you look up um, Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 in a Strong's Concordance basically each of these reference numbers is the would be the Hebrew word that the words before them was translated from so in the beginning was translated from Hebrew reference number 7225 so if you click on double click on 7225 you will get um, to a screen that looks like this and that's the again the Hebrew reference number 7225 in the Strong's Concordance it comes from this Hebrew word this Hebrew word is pronounced Rashet and when you translate Rashet into English it translates to Rashet, not the beginning. So the first thing we're going to do, we're back at Genesis chapter 1, verses 1. And we're going to add Rashet into the scriptures. So it's in the Rashet. Elohim created the heavens and the earth. Now the reason we're doing this is because the word beginning does not have the same meaning as the Hebrew word Rashet. The English word beginning means the point in time or space at which something starts. The Hebrew word rasheth means much more than that. And in order to find out what that Hebrew word rasheth means, we're going to look up the definition in Hebrew. Now, most people say, how would you look up the Hebrew word rasheth in Hebrew? What do you do? You take the modern um, Hebrew word rasheth, and you take each letter and you translate it back to ancient Hebrew, which I have done for you here already. So this is um, Rush, Aleph, Shin, Yoid, and Taz translated back to its original hieroglyphs. And when you read this in the ancient Hebrew, it reads, The Son of God devoured on the cross. So this is the meaning of Rasheth. Rasheth means son of God devoured on the cross. That is the definition of Rasheth. Now, the next thing I have here is if you look up Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 and it's in the original Hebrew, this is how it is written here. And one of the things I have highlighted here again is the word Rasheth. And what I want to point out is that before the Rasheth, there's another word in the Hebrew Bible that is not in the English Bible. And it is this letter here. Now, this letter here is the second letter in the Hebrew alphabet, which is Beth. When you take the letter Beth and translate it back to ancient Hebrew, this is the hieroglyph that it derives from. And this is a floor plan of a tent. It's basically like the tent floor plan and the door of the tent that opens and closes here. Now, um, in ancient Hebrew, this basically means plan. 
And again, I have here um, Genesis chapter 1, verses 1. So you see that the King James Version Bible does not um, include um, this Beth in Scripture. And what we're going to do is add it in so that we can understand fully what's taking place in Genesis chapter 1, verses 1. So we're back at Genesis chapter 1, verses 1. So the plan Rasheth. Now, what does Rasheth mean? The plan was for the Son of God to be devoured on the cross. This is the correct translation of the first Hebrew words in the book of Genesis, not in the beginning. It's the plan Rasheth, which means the plan was for the, was for the Son of God to be devoured on the cross. Now, what we're going to do is go over a few scriptures to confirm that. The first one we're going to go over is Revelations chapter 13, verse 8. This is the second part of that scripture. It says, the lamb slain. And again, what, is, what does a lamb slain mean? It, uh, it, he's the Pesach or the um, Pascaha, which means he's ate. He's devoured on the cross. So the lamb slain. From the foundations of the world. This means before the world was ever created, the lamb was slain. In other words, it's talking about that plan. So when you go back to the uh, scripture, the plan Rasheth, the lamb slain from the foundation of the world. And again, this is before God created the heaven and the earth. When you go to 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 19 through 20, it says, But with the precious blood of Christ, as of a lamb, without blemish and without spot, who verily was foreordained. This word foreordained means it was planned before the foundation of the world. That means before the heavens and the earth was created. And again, so when you go back to Genesis, plan Rasheth. The, the plan was for... Um, before God created the heavens and the earth, the lamb is all is already planned that the lamb is going to be slain, devoured on the cross. Now, from here, I want to go to Revelation um, chapter one, verses nine through twenty. And again, this subsection of scripture is known as Ionis vision on Patmos, which we covered in the last lesson. Also, verse nine says. I, Ionis, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation, and in the kingdom and patience of the Jesus Christ, was in the islands that is called Pathmos for the word of God and for the testimony of the Jesus Christ. I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice saying, as, a, as of a trumpet, saying, I am Alpha and Omega, the first and the last. And again, we go over this in detail in the lesson titled, The Report of the Guards, when we cover Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 11. The, um, Alpha and Omega is the first and last letters of the Greek alphabet. The Aleph and the Taz is the first and last letter of the modern Hebrew alphabet. Um, now from here, I want to go back to Matthew chapter 27, verses 32 through 44. This is the crucifixion. Verse 36 says, And sitting down, they watched him there, and set up over his head his accusation written, This is Jesus, the kings of the Eodias. Now we go to Luke chapter 23, verses 26 to 43, which we cover in detail in the lesson titled, The Crucifixion. It says, And the subscription also was written over him, in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. So again, we talked about this in the crucifixion, that Jesus' name in Hebrew, again, was that Allah and that Taz. So now from here, we're going to go to Revelations, chapter 1, verses 8, and it says, I am the Alpha and Omega. So now we know this is Jesus because he's saying I'm the Alpha and Omega. He says the beginning. So in Revelations chapter 1 verses 8, Christ is letting you know he is the Rasheth. 
He's the son of God devoured on the cross before the foundations of the world. It's talking about him. He says, I'm the beginning. And we already went over those scriptures and he adds to it and the end. So now we're going to go over a few scriptures so you understand exactly again what this word in means. When you go to Revelation chapter 10, verse 6, it says, And swear by him that live forever and ever, who created heavens and the things therein, and the earth and the things um, therein, are and the sea and the things which are therein, that there should be time no longer. This is what it means. He says, I'm the beginning. He's the Rosheth. And he's the end. When there's time no longer. It says, but in those days of the voice of the seventh angel. The seventh angel is the last trump. So let's go over a few scriptures to see what happened at the last trump. So we can figure out when does the end occur. And when is um, there's going to be no longer time. So when you go to Matthew chapter 24, verses 26 to 31, this subsection of scripture is known as the return of the Son of Man, which we go over in detail in the lesson titled Return of Jesus Christ. It says, immediately after the tribulation of those days, shall the sun be darkened and the moon shall not give her light and the stars shall fall from heaven and the powers of heaven shall be shaken. And then shall appear the sign of the Son of Man in heaven and then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn and they shall see the Son of Man coming in the clouds of heaven with power and great glory. And he shall send his angels with a great sound of a trumpet. So which trumpet is this? This is the seventh trumpet, which is the last trump. So when we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verses 52, it confirms that. It says in the moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. This is that seventh angel. When the seventh angel sound. It says, for the trump shall sound and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. So in other words, there is time no longer, no more death, and we shall be changed. And it says, and they shall gather together his elect from the four winds from one end of heaven to the other. Now we're going back to Revelations 10 and 6. And it says, when he shall begin to sound, that's that last trump, the mysteries of God shall be Finish. That is, I am the beginning, the Rosheth, and the end. This takes place again when he shall begin to sound that um, seventh angel or that last trump. There will be time no longer. So he's the beginning and the end as he hath to declare to his servants the prophet. Now, if you go to Revelations, also chapter 22, verses 21, um, not only is Christ mentioned in the first two words in the, in the first scripture in the Bible because it says the plan for Rosheth, but the very last verse in the book of Revelations also ends with his name. It says the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. So when you take the very first verse in the Bible and the very last verse in the Bible, they're both mentions Jesus Christ. Now from here, I want to go to Revelations. Uh, finish reading Revelations chapter 1 verses 8. We left off um, by saying, I'm the Alpha and Omega, the Rosheth and the End. Saith the Lord, which is and which was and which is to come. His second coming, the Almighty. Now from here, I want to go to Revelations chapter 22 verse 13. Because it says it again. I am the Alpha and and the Omega, I am the Rosheth, and the end, the first and the last. So all of this are talk, is talking about Jesus Christ. He's that um, Aleph and that Taz. So now we're going to go back to Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 to 2. Again, this subsection of scripture is known as in the beginning. And we already went over. In the beginning, Elohim created the heavens and the earth. So basically, I have here again, it opened up in a strong concordance, and we already went over in the beginning, and you should see now that this is a very poor translation of the Hebrew scriptures. But what we're going to do now is continue to read and translate the rest of this first verse only. So the first thing I want to point out 
is the order of the reference numbers in the King James Version Bible. You have H7725, then you have H430, H1254, um, H853, and so on. Now, we already talked about that this first reference number um, for Beth is missing out of the King James Version Bible translation. And again, um, this right here is the Hebrew um, where the King James Version Bible is translated from. And this is great because we already went over the Beth, which is the plan, and the Rashet. And now we're going to go over the rest of that um, translation in Hebrew. Now, again, one of the things that I want to point out when we before we read this Hebrew is that the order of the sentence is changed. The King James Version Bible has H430, then H125, then H um, five three, but in the original Hebrew, it has the H one two five four first. So it have created before God. And another thing I want to point out is they have a reference number here H eight five three, but there's no word there. The word is taken out. But we're going to add the word in, so we know exactly what. Genesis chapter 1 verses 1 says in Hebrew. So again, um, it, it would read in the Hebrew, created. So again, um, the plan, um, Rashet, then it says created. Elohim, eighth. Now this is that word that is missing out of the scriptures. So um, and if you notice, this word eighth is that Allah and the task. So what do we know about the Allah and the task? Christ says, I'm the Allah and the task. And this Allah and task is taken out of Genesis chapter one, verses one. So we're going to start back over and kind of read this. The plan, Rasheth, so it was planned before the heavens and the earth was ever created, that Christ had to be devoured on the cross. So that's the plan. And now we're going to get into the creation of heaven and earth. It reads, created Elohim and Atah, eighth. This is Elohim. This is the God the Father and God the Son. So created God the Father and God the Sons, the heavens and the earth. And this is taken out of Genesis chapter 1, verses 1. And again, that atah, I mean this eighth, um, is what Christ said he is. He said, I am the first and the last. This is referring to Jesus. So created Elohim and Jesus, the heavens and the earth. Now, we're going to confirm this with scripture as i always do the first scripture i'm going to go over is psalms chapter 33 verse 6 it says by the word of jehovah now who is jehovah if you go to isaiah chapter 44 verse 6 it says thus saith jehovah the king of israel and his redeemer jehovah of armies i am the first and the last so this is who jehovah is and we know who who is jehovah Jesus. So again, by the word of Jehovah, were or Jesus, were the heavens made and all the hosts of them by the breath of his mouth. Go to John chapter 1, verses 1 through 4, known as in the beginning. So again, in the beginning, talking about that Rosheth before the heavens and the earth was ever created. It says, was the word, that is that eighth, the Aleph and the Taz. And the word, Jesus, that Aleph and the Tab, was with Elohim. And the word, which is the Aleph and the Taz, was Elohim. The same was in the beginning with Elohim. Talking about the Aleph and the Taz. It was there in the beginning. But it was taken out of the scriptures. It says all things were made 
by him, the Aleph and the Taz. And without the Aleph and the Taz was not anything made that was made. John chapter 1 verse 10, he was in the world, the Aleph and the Taz. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Ephesians chapter 3, verses 1 through 13, the subsection of scripture is known as the mysteries of the gospels. I want to start at verse 8. It says, unto me, who am less, the least of all saints, is this grace given, that I should preach among the Gentiles. Now this word Gentiles also mean nations, the unsearchable riches of Christ, and to make all men see what is the fellowship of the mystery, which from the beginning of the world hath been hid in God, who created all things by Jesus Christ. And the very first scripture in the Old Testament confirms this. When you go to Colossians chapter 1, verses 15 through 23, the subsection of scripture is known as the supremacy of Christ. It says, in other words, we go back and say, who created all things by Jesus Christ, who is the image of the unseen God, the firstborn of every creature, the firstborn to be resurrected from the dead. For by him were all things created. All things were created by Jesus that are in heaven and that are in the earth, seen and unseen, whether they be thrones or dominions or principalities or powers, all things were created by Jesus and for Jesus, the Allah and the Taz. So now we are Hebrews chapter one. It says, God, who at um, sun-dry times and in divers manners spake in the time past unto the fathers by the prophets, have in these last days spoken unto us by his son, whom he hath appointed heir of all things, by whom also he made the worlds. Again, everything was created by Jesus. Colossians chapter 1, verses 24 to 29, verse 25 says, Wherefore I am made a minister, according to this dispensation of God, which is given to me for you uh, to fulfill the word of God, even the mystery which had been hid from ages and from generations, but now is made manifest to the saints, to whom God will make known what is the riches of his glory of this mystery among the nations, which is Christ in you, the hope of glory, whom we preach, warning every man and teaching every man in all wisdom, that we may present every man perfect in Christ Jesus, who have saved us and called us with an holy calling, not according to our works, but according to his own purpose and grace, which was given us in Christ Jesus before the world began, that is the Roshath. Titus chapter 1, verses 2 says, In hope of eternal life, which God, that can not lie, he promised before the world, he promised in the Rosheth. So how did he promise eternal life in the Rosheth? That by the his son being devoured on the cross, through that we will inherit eternal life. The gospel of the kingdom is published unto all nations. And now shall the end come. And this concludes the gospel of the kingdom YouTube channel.